wanted to uh, thank everybody for, uh, for attending with us today. Uh, we are very, very um, excited that, uh, that you're able to join us on this uh, very snowy, uh, what is it, Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. We've got a very special guest, which will join us later in the, later in the webinar, uh, Sheila Ross, who will be talking about House Bill 248, which is the crush-proof crush uh, medication and what that bill looks like. So I'm very excited to have her. Uh, Sheila uh, has been a good friend to the agency for a number of years. So um, we're very uh, excited to have her uh, on the phone call this morning. Um, so uh, let's get right to it. Um, I wanted to very quickly uh, go through some of the things that we're going to be um, uh, focusing on the next couple weeks. The legislature returns to uh, returns to session next week, uh, from what we understand. And um, you know, one of the big things that we're really going to focus on is make sure that House Bill 68 uh, does not pass. Um, we're actually meeting with Representative Beakey tomorrow. I'll talk a little bit more about his website and some of the things that he is doing. Uh, he is a representative uh, over in um, uh, Western Ohio and uh, has really uh, has really jumped on to uh, try to help uh, defeat uh, this bill. Uh, basically, House Bill 68 would raise the alcohol content limit, the maximum allowable uh, content limit for beer, from 12 percent to 21 percent. Um, you know, why would they do this? Well, there are, I guess, there's some craft brewers and and some of those folks that uh, would like to raise the limit. Um, from others that uh, a 21 percent uh, would be absolutely the nastiest taste ever uh, drank in their lives. Uh, so you know we're, we're hearing a couple different things. Um, what we are really concerned about are the public health concerns. Um, I know that Miller Coors they sent written testimony against the bill uh, back in uh, early December, and uh, th they're in opposition to it. Uh, we also wrote a, a letter opposing the bill, which uh, I've sent out a couple times in the last few legislative updates. So if if you need a copy of that uh, letter, um, would like to use it as a template for for a letter you might write, um, that would be. Uh, you know, put, please let us know, and we'd be more than happy to get that. Uh, our, the letter basically focuses on binge drinking and over uh, the alcohol. You know, the, uh, overusing alcohol, uh, using you know, do, doing it too much, and what that means. Uh, basically, a 21% beer would be 4.1 drinks, uh, which would be considered a binge drinking episode just for having one beer, and. Uh, the, uh, there was a Washington Post article uh, that was published um, back in uh, mid-December uh, that basically said that alcohol deaths uh, are at a 35-year high. Uh, and this is not deaths from uh, um, driving, drunk, and those types of things. This is health concerns. And uh, there is a, there's a conference going on in Washington, D.C. in April uh, called AP17, Alcohol Policy 17. And their primary focus this year uh, at this conference is going to be uh, focusing on alcohol's link to cancer. So uh, this is starting to, uh, there's a whole lot of science that's starting to uh, starting to be understood about alcohol's link to cancer. Um, and, uh, and hopefully, if you want information on that uh, conference, please let me know and I'd get, I'd, I'd get it to you. Uh, it's, it's actually, I went to AP 16. It was one of the best conferences I'd ever attended on the subject. So a um, lot of learning. Uh, your top guys uh, in, in uh, uh, alcohol prevention are there. Uh, David Jernigan, Diane Reby. Um, you know, you just have a whole all-star lineup. Our concerns also in our letter, however, going back to that, uh, are uh, you know, if four loco uh, would be would come into into our uh, into our state, they could actually have a 14, 16 percent beer. Uh, they have just been, um, you know, had their hand publicly slapped uh, for basically marketing to kids. Uh, they were a, a kind. They're considered a beer. Uh, they actually um, added. Uh, they, they were a beer slash energy drink, so uh, which is kind of interesting. But uh, we're fearful that companies like this that really don't uh, 
don't don't care about public health would come into our state, uh, try to create the strongest beer possible. You know, the the issues for young people and kids would be uh, you know we we think devastating. Um, you know, even normal you know people who might have a beer after work or something, uh, you get. You get, you know, get on the road or uh, or, or uh, do do something else. You know that that's uh, that's not going to work work real well because people won't understand that the beer content is so much higher in some of these products. So we're really really opposing this bill. Again, we meet with Representative Beaky tomorrow on it uh, to try to come up with a strategy, uh, and, and we'll send out information about how coalitions could help. Um, could help uh, uh, take part in this because your voice is going to be uh, crucial um, in all of this. Um, and going to Representative Beaky, he actually created a website called BeakyStandingStrong.Weebly.com. And he calls this high um, alcohol content beer um, blackout beer, which uh, he came up with that all himself, so uh, that's something that uh, I had not heard before. Um, really an interesting website because he talks about the high content beer that we can't have this uh, for the citizens of Ohio. Um, and then there's a second section, um, and this is the, these are the only two issues that this website deals with, um, is focused on the whole medical marijuana argument that, um, that they're starting to debate now. Um, so it basically goes to what we have always been saying. Let's let's do this in a science-based method. We can't let folks who are just going to use this um, you know, use this uh, to get high. Uh, that's not what we want for the, the citizens of Ohio. We need to protect our uh, to protect our citizens, protect our state, protect our young people from from turning into another Colorado. And uh, it really is quite a uh, a cool website. And um, you know something that we worked with, uh, frankly, work with Representative Beaky on. Um, I was surprised when he reached out to us, and uh, but uh, he, he's really stepped up. And uh, as you uh, as you talk to your legislator, uh, your legislators, um, please, um, you know, say represent. We would love for you to be as strong on this issue as Representative Beaky. Uh, maybe even direct them to his website. Um, and there's also a survey included on the site, um, which is basically how do you feel about this? Um, I don't know, it's probably 10 or 12 questions. And uh, really, uh, he's trying to measure what his constituency and what Ohio uh, thinks about these two issues. So um, I, I encourage you to go to Beaky Standing Strong. Um, and Beaky is spelled B U C H Y. Um, BeakyStandingStrong.Weebly.com. So um, you know, I just want to thank uh, Representative Beaky for doing this uh, and bringing awareness to this. Um, we also have the uh, the marijuana update um, uh, on medical marijuana. Uh, they are uh, getting as much. Um, uh, information as they can to introduce a medical marijuana bill. The House is creating a ta we found out the House is creating a task force of which there's 15 members. We're trying to horn in to be one of those members so that we can uh, our voice can be uh, on that 15 me 15 member task force. Uh, I know that there will be five legislators on this task force, a couple of business uh, business individuals, uh, a lot of medical leaders, and we're trying to insert ourselves as well. So we're having. Uh, those kind of um, discussions. Um, basically, what they're going to do is, to, is have consideration and uh, be a think tank about you know, our position. Uh, in fact, we just met with the Ohio Grocers Association as well and shared the position that um, we uh, you know, want this to go through a scientific method. Uh, this is not anything that uh, should be uh, just kind of uh, taken and uh, because of pain or, or anything else. Um, so we really uh, want to gather as many partners on this and do, you know, if this is going to happen uh, and they're going to introduce a bill, uh, let's make sure that, uh, you know, this is based on science and, uh, and some of those things and not based on uh, just uh, what what other states are doing as far as this? Um, they're also, and we need to really step up and, and call our legislators. It's ten minutes out of your day, five or ten minutes. We need to, you know, our every coalition member that you have needs to to call in to their legislator again, a five minute, ten minute conversation. To uh, to, to you know, here's what we. 
you know, medical marijuana should be tested like any other medicine um, and, and deemed uh, deemed a safe and, uh, product and get those, uh, you know, get those pieces out of, of marijuana that, that actually have medicinal values. You don't need the THC and all that other kind of stuff. Um, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm saying that very seriously because the Marijuana Policy Project uh, sent a letter uh, urging folks to contact their legislators. And there are, um, and when, what they want uh, folks to do in their in their um, in their calls to legislators is to uh, include stories of pain relief. Um, they want they fear that uh, the ailment of pain is not going to be in the bill, and they want that because again that's you know 95 percent of the people who get a medical marijuana card use it for pain, and uh, so they they're really pushing the whole pain issue. Um, in the letter, uh, it says the docs can already prescribe oxycontin, cocaine, and methamphetamine, um, which I didn't know they could prescribe cocaine, but uh, but who am I? Um, and then uh, they also talk about the opiate epidemic, that if you would just let people use marijuana, uh, then the opiate epidemic would go away. So that's their three big talking points. We have to counter those arguments. We've got to call our legislators, because the number one thing I hear from legislators here are, I didn't know you guys existed um, as far as the opposition. All I hear from uh, people who want medical marijuana, you know, we, we, got, we have to be uh, strong on this issue. Again, it's five or ten minutes out of your day. Um, if you want to send a quick email, do that. Um, if you don't know who your legislator is, give me a call. Uh, we'll figure that out and, uh, you know, really, really need your support on this. And uh, also, there is a Fresh Start Act that was that was uh, given to the legislature legislature um, in the past week. Uh, basically, this was the, what they were collect, responsible. House was responsible. Ohio was collecting signatures uh, for something called the Fresh Start Act. And what this does is. Uh, they, they gather enough signatures. Uh, they were validated. And the legislature now has four months to uh, act on this Fresh Start Act. And what this Fresh Start Act would do would expunge records of drug offenders, um, uh, a lot like um, uh, was done back in 2012 with weapon offenses. Uh, this has actually been done before with with uh, guns and weapons and those types of things. Um, and, and they're pushing it as you know minor drug offenses. Um, the, that would be expunged. Well, the issue is that minor possession can already be expunged. You can you can um, uh, you can lobby the court and uh, expunged. Um, the the thing with this issue. Um, does this include, does the Fresh Start Act include trafficking, cultivation, um, you know, if you're a drug dealer? Does this mean that your record is wiped clean? Um, so there are a lot of questions. We're still looking into this, and I hope to have good discussion on this at our next BECA meeting, which is January 19th at 10 a.m. at the Westerville uh, Library. Um, you know, we're going to allow a little more time for us to have a good discussion on this. Really, really need your, your uh, feedback and your input. Um, into this. I also have reached out to uh, partners in our business community, prosecuting attorneys from uh, around the state, also um, uh, law enforcement to, uh, to kind of get a better handle about what they think of this uh, so that we can actually uh, devise a, a statement and uh, some talking points. So those should be coming out soon. Again, we really, really encourage you to be at the SPECA meeting next week so you can be part of the discussion um, on this and, uh, and, and we come up with some kind of uh, uh, hopefully uh, similar talking points so that we can um, let our legislators know about uh, our opposition to a Fresh Start Act as well. And finally, um, just uh, legalize Ohio 16, which is the, uh, the group that's trying to get another ballot initiative on uh, on the ballot for 16. Uh, they are still collecting signatures. Uh, this is a recreational use amendment. It used to be the Ohio Instant Prohibition, was it, it was called, but they changed their name. Um, they're really pushing this as a medical marijuana program, which is another uh, consideration uh, that has to be taken into uh, as, as this bill is, um, as this bill is uh, going to be debated, uh, the medical marijuana bill in the spring. 
Um, edibles would be marketed. Uh, a workplace that's actually a little more um, egregious as far as to the workplace and, and marijuana. Uh, workplaces could not fire a person uh, for being high on the job. Uh, there's no licenses for home grows. It's a you know kind of free for all. Anybody could grow at home. There would be no licenses. Um, you could possess 100 grams, um, and then adults would be able to uh, possess uh, marijuana and marijuana products in any amount in their homes. So you can carry around 100 grams, but then in your home you could have a you know a, a 20 by 20 room filled. Excuse me with it. So you know these are this is a, this is a less Funded campaign. Uh, these are more of the advocates, although they are run by a very, very um, uh, smart political guy um, who uh, who knows the political um, ins and outs. He's ran campaigns in his past, so um, so this is something that uh, we really need to pay attention to as well. Um, so uh, I am going to uh, turn this over to uh, Sheila Ross at this point. At the end, we'll have some questions and answer times. And uh, again, I encourage you to, to become part of this conversation um, on the uh, Fresh Start Act and some of the medical marijuana bill uh, considerations uh, next uh, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Take it away, Sheila. Thanks, Tony. Um, and thanks, everyone, for the opportunity to, to talk to you about what we're doing here on behalf of the Medicine Abuse Project. Um, just a little background about the Medicine Abuse Project. Um, in 2012, it was formed um, in coordination with the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Um, we're an action-based action campaign aimed at preventing half a million teens from abusing medicine. Um, Several of our priorities, priorities are encouraging parents and public to take action, to talk to the kids about the dangers of prescription drugs, um, safeguard and properly dispose of use medication, and then supporting legislative initiatives um, that would come to that end. Currently, in Ohio, we're focused on um, the abuse deterrent formulations and getting legislation that would allow them to be more accessible. Um, uh, you may be aware of, everyone's pretty much aware of the opiate epidemic that's facing um, our nation here. Um, I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the abuse deterrent opioids and that technology. Uh, on the screen, there is an infographic that you'll be sent via email, and it talks about different ways that some of these prescription opiates um, abuse resistant. Um, some of them are physical and chemical barriers that make them difficult to crush up and or inject back. Um, others have an antagonist that goes with it, um, so you won't get a euphoric high. Um, all in all, we have been working right now Sorry, um, Representative Sprague and Representative Antonio have introduced legislation, um, House Bill 248, which is being heard in the House Health and Aging Committee. It has had four hearings to date, um, and right now Representative Sprague is continuing to work on garnering support to try to get it out of the House. Um, Senator Height has indicated in the Senate. It's our understanding at this point that he is waiting to see where Representative Sprague goes with the actual language of the legislation. Um, they are working on a compromise. Um, business committees, the Ohio Chamber has indicated um, opposition as well as NFID and health care plans. Um, so we're working to try to find, or he's working to try to find a compromise language that will make it easier to get through um, a committee vote and to the floor. Um, so with that in mind, we are continuing to try to keep the momentum, educate the public and members of the General Assembly about the importance of ADOs. Um, in our mind, I mean, one in 14 report misusing or abusing prescription drugs. 
you know, like two thirds of them abused pain relievers and they got them from a family member. Um, overdose deaths from opiate, prescription opiates have quadrupled in the past decade. Um, and they surpassed car car accidents. Um, there is no doubt in our mind that it needs to be done. And we're hoping without the ability for kids to get their hands on it and to use the pre prescription um, opiates, we can reduce um, the problem in the beginning on the front end. Um, so that is what I have. We encourage anyone that's interested. My contact information is on that previous slide. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, I can give you contact information for members of the House Health and Aging Committee or your representative and how you can get engaged. I can give you more background information. Um, in 2010, the OxyContin was reformulated um, and with a more abuse deterrent um, formulation. And studies have shown that it has made it less desirable in the streets. People are not using it. Uh, they used to be able to request, or in a pharmacy or robbery, they request whatever pharmaceutical they would like. Um, it has been requested far less now um, as a result of the abuse returns. So uh, advocacy efforts, as it says there, um, if you can share information, you should. There, I have um, a one pager on the medicine abuse project. What we're doing. Frequently asked questions. If you'd like to see it, you can contact members of the general general assembly and support of 248. Join our efforts um, by sharing your support with um, your local papers, um, with an LT or an op-ed. Um, in February, we anticipate. Um, Senator Height introducing his bill, um, and around then we will have an advocacy day, and I will share that information if you're interested in attending and meeting with members, um, and then also share your story. If anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you so much, Sheila. Um, we did have one question come in from um, a webinar participant. Can you repeat what ADO stands for for us? Yeah. I, I apologize. apologize. I'm, I'm used to it. talking about it and forgetting about it. ADO is abuse deterrent opioids. So any of these opioids that have the technology that make it difficult to um, crush or snore or um, any way that people are actively manipulating the drug to get a high, um, this would make it, it has some sort of technology that makes this much more difficult to do and less um, appealing. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Sheila. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on and sharing uh, this information. Um, Sheila, do we know uh, when the next hearing is going to be on House Bill 248? No, I think right now that's still um, up in the air. As I said, Senator, or Senator, Representative Sprague and Representative Antonio um, are having interested party meetings um, to try to find a middle ground where the health care plans would be amenable. Right now there's a fail safe um, process to get an ADO and then that prevents a lot of people from getting it because a, to fail on an opioid um, pain reliever you would have to not get pain relief um, and you're, you're gonna get pain relief from an opioid pain reliever. Um, so until he gets Representative Sprague is comfortable with the, the language he's going to either do as an amendment or a sub bill. We don't have that date. I, I think we're believing it will probably be maybe early February. Um, and, and Sheila, also, what could uh, our coalition members uh, do, uh, writing letters in support or uh, offering uh, written testimony? What are some of those things that uh, our coalitions could do? Yeah, absolutely.
absolutely. Um, any letters that you're willing to write to members of the House Health and Aging or your particular um, representative, senator, would be great. Phone calls to their offices are great. Um, sharing information with individuals that would also, you know, in your networks that would be supportive and willing to do written testimony. As I said, we're, we're going to plan another advocacy day when we get more um, finalization on when Senator Height introduces his Senate companion bill and when the next house hearing it. And if you're willing to come on the meet number and tell them why you would be supportive of that, that would also be great. And if you're willing to, to get involved, let me know, and I will try to make it as easy as possible for your engagement. Excellent. So writing letters, phone calls, um, those types of things, and then uh, there are fact sheets I think uh, we have sent out um, through our legislative uh, updates as well. So if you need any of those types of things, any kind of talking points, uh, we have those uh, as well. Um, Sheila, thank you so much for coming on with us and uh, and sharing this information. I think it's so valuable, um, especially for those who, uh, who, who have a loved one struggling with uh, addiction to these things and uh, you know the, these pre prescription pills. I think it's such a, a needed piece of legislation. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Um, and then um, uh, I guess there was a question about uh, that, that was for me about uh, House Bill 68. Whether the vote. Um, I'm trying to get. Uh, we're, we're trying to get this actually to where it's not voted on. Uh, this is a bill that would uh, make this uh, yeah, th this jump from 12 to 21 percent. We don't want to vote on this bill. We want uh, this to be to go away, basically. Um, and the other piece that I think is really valuable on the House Bill 68 is um, uh, legislators were asked about it, um, and they were like, "Well, I don't see what the big deal is. I haven't heard anything bad against ab about uh, raising the the legal limit." So even if uh, this is voted down. We want to put a strong uh, thought into their head that uh, this is not good on any bill. House bill, Senate bill, Republican, Democrat, this is just not a good idea for folks, uh, for, for the legislature to consider. So um, we, we want no vote and for this to die a uh, very silent uh, death, if you will. That's, that's a beautiful way of ending this thing. Um, didn't know if there were any other questions or anything. Um, if not, then uh, we, we th I thank you again so much for joining us this morning. Thanks again to Sheila Ross for helping us understand House Bill 